This episode is proudly supported by the new Capital Food Market Canberra, where you can explore the very best producers, artisans, fresh food providors, and hospitality venues of the region. Here is Krista Potter from Delhi Cravings. It's going to be a beautiful marketplace. It's going to be busy, it's going to be vibrant, it's going to have choice. Um, it's all under one roof, so the weather's not going to be a problem. Yeah, I just can't wait to see the community all back. For more information, go to capitalfoodmarket.com.au or visit the markets and feed your curiosity. Well, I never thought I'd be a prune farmer. I, we, <laughs> we are really, we're accidental prune farmers, really. We didn't plan on being prune farmers, but prunes sort of just seemed to be a really good industry. We were making good money and it just sort of happened. This is The Producers. I'm Anthony Huckstep. The first of its kind in Australia, naturally dried prunes, are the most sustainable prune farm down under, utilising prune drying tunnels that have reduced the carbon footprint by 95% during the drying process. But as Anne Ferner explains, that's just part of their story. We're farming um, in an area called the Riverina in New South Wales. So um, we're part of the Murrumbidgee Irrigation Area, which allows us to um, irrigate our um, farm. Uh, We are smack bang in the middle of um, a little area between two towns called uh, Yenda, and then the main big town next to us is Griffith in um, New South Wales. Our brand is um, a brand called Naturally Dried Prunes. Uh, We started this um, little venture about four years ago and um, we actually um, sun-dry our prunes. So we're the only ones in Australia that actually sun-dries prunes on a large scale um, we imported some uh, sun drying technology from Switzerland, actually, and we then have used that technology to differentiate ourselves in the prune industry, which has allowed us to create our own brand. Um, so, what we do, we actually sell a range of prune products and um, with the main focus of a chocolate coated prune so which are really delicious. Growing up in a farming family Anne always knew agriculture would be in her future. My mum and dad have worked their butts off to to get where they are today and um, they we started out my my mum and dad started out as share farmers and and um and she and a she and my dad was a shearer, and um, so they actually ended up purchasing a farm in the early '80s, and we actually lived off lamb chops and and veg. So three veg and and lamb chops, and let me tell you, I'm I I could uh, yes avoid that for the rest of my life. I think. So. <laughs> So, yes, that was one of my earliest memories, lamb chops and three veg. So, yeah. I was with my dad on the farm when I was littler, in about year 10 or 11, when we were trying to decide what what path I was going to take. And um, I ended up just saying to dad, I remember this really clearly. I said to dad, I really like agriculture, but I don't want to deal with animals. I don't want to deal with sheep and cows or I don't want to deal with pigs. And um, so he he actually said to me, well, what about horticulture? And I ended up just saying, well, what is horticulture? (laughs) And um, from there, that's where my love of horticulture is started and um, I really just grew from there and um, I haven't looked back. I've enjoyed it for many, many years and um, I'll continue to enjoy growing food and and looking after trees. It's a really, really great job. So before we became, or before I became a prune farmer, um, I have a background in horticulture. Um, I studied horticultural science at university and then that took me to 
a little town in Victoria called Cobram, um, a great little spot to live. And I was working for a large stone fruit um, growing and production company down there. And then um, my things changed and then I ended up um, finding a job as a horticultural agronomist in Griffith and that brought me home because I'm originally from this area. And so I was dealing with um, lots of different uh, horticultural crops and lots of different farmers and learning about different techniques of growing and, and advising farmers on different products to use on their farms and and doing a basic role of, of an agronomist. And um, so that, that sort of got me involved in the prune industry because I was dealing with all of the prune growers in the local area. After wanting to escape to the country, Anne and her husband found a farm and all of a sudden they became accidental plum and prune farmers. Anthony and I, my husband and I were living in a small little unit in town and in Griffith and we were pulling our hair out just saying we never want to live in town. We, we just don't want to live in town. We want to be out on a farm or have a little bit more space. So we had a bit of a look around and this farm popped up on the market and um, we decided to put a bid in and we got it. So... Um, so that took us back to absolutely not having any money. We started with absolutely nothing. We had no machinery to run the place. <laughs> we um, started not really knowing how to run a farm. I had lived on a farm all my life, and, and but I'd never made decisions on the farm. So I went from advising growers how to do things on their farm to actually doing things on my own farm. And I found it really difficult to make those decisions. So, but um, we've had many, many things go wrong and we've had many things go right. But um, yeah, one of our, one of our favorite memories just, uh, well, not favorite, it was a pretty awful memory actually, but um, we actually were during harvest time, which happens in February, um, our neighbor, he um, had an accidental irrigation issue and he flooded our prune orchard and we actually ended up losing the crops. So we couldn't, we, could, we couldn't actually get into harvest. So that was a bit of a daunting situation to be put under. But, but we ended up managing and we got through another year and, um, yes, it hasn't happened since, which is nice. So. <laughs> Starting from sugar plums, the prune process is extensive. Prunes are a really interesting product, actually. So we actually grow uh, sugar plums uh, for the purpose of drying. So a sugar plum is a purple skin and yellow flesh plum. Um, it originates from France. The original ones came over from France uh, a long, long time ago. And... Um, we, yes, so we grow those. So it's like growing any other stone fruit, but a little bit less um, intensive. So we don't have to manually thin. We don't really have to manually um, prune our, pro our trees. So we can actually just grow them um, basically like any other tree, um, but it's, they're deciduous. So they sleep during the winter and come to life in spring. Um we spend lots of hours in there monitoring for pests and diseases. Um, we use drip irrigation to uh, apply our water and fertiliser. And um, we also, um, the during harvest, so harvest is in February, and during harvest we use mechanical shakers to actually um, shake our fruit off the tree and we um yeah the drying process is, is interesting as well so with prunes you harvest in the day what you actually can dry that day as well so you can't harvest any more than what you can dry so you you don't you don't have fresh fruit sitting in bins overnight and that sort of thing so um so on our farm we can harvest about 40 bins a day so we harvest those 40 bins a day and then we 
process them and then put them on the dryers that same day. So we um, it takes about three or four weeks to get through harvest and it's a pretty intensive period. Using our solar drying system, it's a little bit less intensive to what um, other growers do in the industry. Um, we can sleep at night where the other growers are up all night um, attending to their prunes, but um, we actually can just put our fruit in the solar drying beds and um, they're covered with a clear plastic and then in during the day they heat up and they lose moisture and then during the night they don't do much, they just sleep. So our prunes can take sort of three to, three to seven days to dry um, and so – it's a, yeah, it's pretty intensive, and we can um, we can dry all of our fruit on our farm um, now, which is really good. We can manage everything on farm. Just as they were about to start selling their products, COVID changed their means to market completely. Naturally dried prunes um, started in two thousand and nineteen. Um, we were geared up. Um, to travel to markets and to uh, to really push, push, push. We were planning this big, big thing in 2020 and, um, and everyone knows that uh, the COVID lockdowns happened in 2020. So just as we had packed all the gear um, for these big markets that we were booked into, we had our market stall set up in our lounge room and... Um, tinkering with the design of that and about a week before we were due to to go to some of these big markets we actually got phone calls saying that they were all cancelled so we had to very quickly um, think outside the square and um, I had to learn how to set up an online shop and um, so we set up a website using uh, Shopify which was quite easy in the end and um, so I jumped online and we used social media as well was a really big thing Um, and it still is like it's a really good tool for us to use um, because we can not only show um, people the production side of it we can actually show them what we do on on farm and and during the drying process and um, we can show them everything we do on the farm and they can get a real sense of what we do here in Yenda so it's exciting. Anne is not only growing plums and making prunes but chocolate is an important part of the mix too. Well they're delicious. Um, (laughs) We um, they're like they're a hot, we coat a whole prune, uh, a whole pitted prune, so it doesn't have the seed in it. So we actually coat, um, yeah, a whole prune. So they're quite large. Um, we have a reasonably thin layer of chocolate on it, so the chocolate doesn't overpower the taste of the prune. But our sun-dried prunes, or um, they, they're really soft and juicy and they're sweet and they've got a really intense plum flavour and um, and they are really like simply delicious, not only coated in chocolate but also just on their own as well. They're incredible. So, um, yeah, they're, I, some people say, oh, they're like a big sultana, but I, I'm not sure if I'd compare it to a sultana. It's... Um, I don't know, they're soft and juicy and and sweet. They're just delicious. (laughs) After creating a unique product for Australia, Anne is looking to diversify. We are looking at um, increasing the capacity of our um, chocolate coating um, business and um, we are looking at potentially expanding the range of products that we do, not only will we be concentrating on prunes Um, that will be our main focus obviously but there's so many other wonderful products grown in the Griffith region that we will maybe look at um, adding some chocolate coated almonds or some apricots or some hazelnuts into our range to to make sure that they're showcased in town as well so um, we also 
are looking at expanding our solar drying capacity. So we're looking at um, importing, um, we're not really sure yet whether it's going to be six or 12 more tunnels to expand the drying capacity on our farm. Um, We also have a little bare block on our farm that we would like to plant more prunes on. So we're just waiting giving that soil a little bit of time to rest because um, we needed to just rest it after plant uh, after pulling out a block of prunes. Um, so we're looking at planting more prunes to expand into the future. And one other thing that we have dabbled in but we haven't really um, completely gone full full bore on is but uh, is tourism p- potential. Um, agro-tourism in the area. There's a lot more on-farm experiences and um, agro-tourism industries are opening up where people can come and visit. So we're looking at potentially getting a little bit more involved with that in the local area. Although Anne's an accidental prune farmer, it's brought all of her skills into one role. Well, I never thought I'd be a prune farmer. I we, <laughs> we are really... We're accidental prune farmers, really. We didn't plan on being prune farmers. When we bought the place, we had wine grapes and prunes on it. Um, We've completely transformed how our farm looks and um, we've removed the wine grapes so we don't have to deal with those anymore. But, um, But prunes sort of just seemed to be a really good industry. We were making good money. Um... And it just sort of happened. But we, I, I'm known in the area as the prune lady. It's hilarious that um, people see me down the street or see me at a market and go, oh, oh, you're the prune lady. So that's that's changed my title in town. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, prunes are an amazing product and um, it's an amazing little industry. It's not very big anymore. And Australia, the Griffith area is the largest prune producing region in Australia, which is exciting. So, and to be one of the 40 or 50 odd growers left is is pretty special. It's completely unique what I do. Um, I'm the only uh, female grower in the industry. Um, I'm not discounting what wives and partners do with their husbands and that sort of thing. But I'm the only female farmer in the prune industry that's making day-to-day decisions on the farm. I run the farm, I drive all the tractors, I manage the chocolate coating um, and everything. Uh, I, I, I suppose I just love the freedom of being able to be my own boss and take our business in a in a new direction if we need to change or if there's something challenging I can just make a decision and and do something different um it's just a wonderful job really being a farmer and producing food for for people and just hearing the feedback from our customers and the wholesalers and the businesses that sell our product it's just wonderful to know that people actually really like our product and and the feedback's really positive so it's what keeps us motivated to to keep producing good quality products so naturally dried prunes is not only a sustainability success story in australia it's a culinary delight too this is the producers a deep in the weeds production I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of producers, farmers, makers and growers, the true lifeblood of the food industry. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or email us at producerspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au.